Hey, what's up guys? This is Timon here. Welcome back to another episode of playing Legendary Game of Heroes. So I wanted to talk about a topic here and that is, you know, some of the cards that you should be thinking about using in this Dark Slayer event. So I got asked a lot of, uh, basically two questions I got asked a lot. The first question is, how do I use the current event deck? What is the activation order? And then when I answer that question, then the second uh, question that follows usually is, well, I'm not doing a lot of damage. So what am I doing wrong? How should I improve it? So I'm going to answer the first question first because it's a pretty easy one. If you're using the full event deck with the ultimate form, ultra, ultra rare master collection card, etc., the tr the correct activation order is going to be your ultimate form first. If you look at the card, the ultimate form is going to give you gen spawns followed by attack boost, followed by additional power gen spawns if there is an uh, attack boost applied. So this card will do everything for you. So you, you kick it off with that. Then you can go ahead and uh, use your master collection card to uh, create mass, create additional uh, power gens as well. And then you can also then end with your ultra rear card, which again, creates four power gem fours and then two more if the card has been boosted uh, and it will always be boosted because the uh, the ultimate form will have boosted it and if you are using support cards in your mix just make sure that you activate the support cards last because the support card as it generally does will create regular dark gems if you were to flip it or around and you activate your support card first, what's going to happen is the eight dark gems will be created. And anytime you spawn a power gem, they will overwrite those dark gems first. So you'll end up with a board that, is, that has less uh, gems total, which impacts your total uh, damage output. So always, always, always make sure that you activate anything that just does regular gem spawns at the very, very end. So then the second, you know, part of the second question that gets asked, like, well, how do you boost this event deck at this moment for now as far as dark slayer is concerned the best way to uh, improve your damage is to use freedom fighters so freedom fighters is a uh, a card that you can craft if you have a bio blitzer as well as militant maven and j just you know just so happens militant maven is available in the collections this week uh, it's also available in the proving ground store and we're going to get the Bio Blitzer uh, team in the Drill Fist Depot as well. So it's going to be available after Friday store reset. So if you don't already have that card, uh, the, uh, Ultimate uh, Freedom Fighters, I highly recommend that you get it. And if you also have this, uh, if you also have the uh, high performance area, then you are going to be set. So. I'm going to talk about my team right here. I'm going to show you how it works because if you use the Freedom Fighters plus high performance unit area, you're going to be golden. And in fact, this is the golden standard, all right, for Dark Slayers at the at this point. Until there's a better card that comes along that boosts your overall damage, this is it. This is the best combination you can come up uh, you can use uh, with any ultimate form. If you have the ultimate form uh, card of this event, you use it with Freedom Fighters and also high uh, high performance in the area, you're going to see a ton more damage than you're currently seeing. I'm using a deck that uses the Unbowed Royalty, which is an older ultimate form that just gets 400%, and I'm seeing really good results of that. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick fight right now so that we can see uh, how it works, and let's see if we have a boss that we can attack. Yeah, so we can see here, so we have Architect uh, Sophia, and let's take a look at, first at the, um, okay, so it's Might, because I wanted to see what the, the debuff is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. Uh, my team is, I have two setups. One uses Gan, and the other uses the support card that uh, handles um, armor. This one handles Toxin. And then I'm using Draconic Scoundrels as uh, the support card. Oh, one thing I have to make sure I, I call out too before I forget. Always use your Freedom Fighters as the leader because this card will boost all Dark Slayers. Whereas if you chose to use, uh, like for example, the Master Collection card with the ultimate form of uh, the the other deck, of the other team, uh, what you're going to end up happening, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to uh, you're going to reduce the overall damage of your Freedom Fighters because this card will only boost Dark Noble Killer. 
Okay, so it's very important when you're using a card, take a look at the leadership skill and make sure that you are giving yourself the most damage output by making the right card the leader. So let's go ahead and, and do this three key attack and let's see how much damage we can deal uh, here. So this is not my own boss. I don't know how many different people will jump in on the boss right now, but our goal is to try and achieve 50%. As long as you can achieve 50%, you're guaranteed to get the MVP as well, and that's going to net you the most amount of points. And this is against a, it's a level 83, so the health is not uh, quite as high as you'll see later on. Uh, so that gives us a better chance. So activation order. After turn one, you activate your high performing in the area, and if you have unbound royalty, activate it as well. Because unbound royalty, the the um, battle skill will only create additional power gems after you attack. So you have to activate it first, then you go ahead and activate. Uh, then you go ahead and um, uh, match the gems. Then you just activate all uh, the rest of your cards afterwards. And now let's pay attention and see how much damage we're able to deal. So Freedom Fighters on his own is able to deal 13.9 trillion, whereas everything else uh, barely gets over a trillion. All right, and so that is the power of this deck. Now, high performance area has a three turn cooldown, so every three turns her battle skill will be available, but you shouldn't use it right away. You have to wait until the boss is about to attack. So in this case, even though the battle skill is available, I don't actually use it. So I'm going to um, now I'm going to uh, activate. And what's nice is I'm also getting a uh, immunity, so I'm not going to lose a lot of health. And so what's going to happen here is I'm going to get hit. I'm not going to activate the Unbound Royalty though because there's really no, uh, no, no point right now. And I'm saving up for when my uh, Slayer Intensity, uh, Slayer Skill goes up to 300. You'll see what I mean by that. Okay. And so I, I actually get healed as well with my Draconic Scoundrels, which is really nice. And now what I'm doing is I'm going to wait for the next time that I can activate my, I can activate my uh, High Performance Area which is going to be the next turn. And what I'm doing here is since my Slayer uh, skill point is at 300, I'm also going to hold off on activating my Unbowed Royalty because then I can get a power, uh, I can get an ultimate gem. And ultimate gem is going to help me get more damage output here. And so really the only time that you activate your un Unbowed Royalty at the same time as the high performance area is going to be the very, uh, on, on turn two. On all the other turns, you're just going to simply activate Unbowed Royalty uh, at the same time with everything else. So now we did, we did about three matches. Okay, so we did about three power gem matches and take a look at the overall damage output. I'm not even gonna bother at this point because we already got our 50%. So we started at a boss that had about 400 trillion and we we're able to bring it down to 122 with this setup with an ultimate i mean i do have an ultimate form so i am getting the four times uh, uh damage output but it is you can just see how much damage i'm able to deal because of uh, freedom fighters if you think about it uh, on average if you get about fifth let's say 15 trillion Every time you get 15 trillion, the very next turn, your Freedom Fighter is going to deal five times of that damage for a total of additional 75 trillion on top of that. So 75 plus 15, you're dealing 90 trillion every time you do an attack. On average, about three to uh, four turns. You're basically doing uh, four turns and you're going to attack for 90 trillion. So if you're fast, you should be able to take out a boss pretty easily or at least get the MVP there. Okay. And so. You can see here we were able to deal 268, and that is with me uh, not doing as fast because I was focused on talking about the setup. All right, so uh, some of the other, I, now I'm just going to talk about some of the other options as well. So like I mentioned before, I also have a setup that helps with the armor dispel. And so with the armor dispel, what you want to do is you want to uh, make sure if you're using support card for armor dispel, uh, you want to place her uh, on the right side. And so what I have it I have here is I have a setup so that I could have my Unbound Royalty, then the Freedom Fighters activate it first, followed by the Draconic Scoundrels, and then finally Treacherous Ildi. Okay, even though usually by that point I have a full board of gems anyway, so she's really just there for um, dispelling the for dispelling the armor. Now, if you don't have high performance area, there is another option that you can go with, and that is to um, use the regular area, which I'm showing right here. So here's the unit area, and it's a support card from the same deck there, uh, but it, it can give you the same output, but only if you can achieve 200 uh, intensity for, commander, um, for the commander skill. 
uh, immortal killer uh, 200 you need to have at least 200 immortal killer intensity for it to behave the same way as um, high performance uh, area so uh, you can still do this it's going to take you a little bit more time and so I changed my relic because of this so instead of uh, slayer relics I put in all four of my immortal killer relics here so I can boost up on the intensity and then I do put in one crown flail to remove one of the um, to remove one of the um, the shields there so I guess the boss is still alive right now let's go and take a look and see if we could um, it might not survive in time because we need to basically survive until we get to 200 intensity but I'm just going to show you quickly how this uh, how this basically works okay so you 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 wouldn't get the same benefit here but you could still benefit from the immunity so during this time what you can do is uh, you could at least do your gem matches and you don't have to worry about uh, losing too much health until you build up your intensity so we need our intensity at 200 and we're going to uh, just kind of work our way up it's also going to be hard for us to get to 300 slayer uh, skill points just because we don't have enough uh, slayer relics at, uh, right now and so I wouldn't worry about it too much and so the nice thing about the uh, you know the the generation the new generation three relics is that no matter whether or not you match gems uh, you're still going to boost your, your intensity amount will go up and timing wise uh, it's going to work out because I'm going to um, it's basically going to be 175 I'm, I'm, by the time it hits 200 I'll be able to activate everything all right and so we're gonna wait one more turn and now uh, what I'm also going to do is since I'm not at 300 slayer um, skill point I'm going to activate my I'm bow royalty at the same time so I can get more power gems okay and then now let's go ahead and activate everything and we're also going to get a little bit of heal which is nice uh, from our Oh, did I not? Act I think I activated it. Oh, I might not have, I must not have activated my uh, unit area yet there. Oh, that's too bad. I thought I activated, I guess my phone lagged and even though I I, uh, I thought I had act. Okay, I think. So, we couldn't show it this time. But I would have gotten a similar damage output if I had uh, if I had actually clicked on the on, on the the battle skill there. Uh, let's see if maybe there's another boss that we can go after so I can show you the same thing. In fact, actually, I do have a boss I can show you. So let's go ahead and use one of my uh, my my. Let's go ahead and use one of my bosses here. Uh, let's just make sure that we have the right setup here. So we have the right setup, and so. I don't think anybody's going to come and try and steal our boss. But just in case, because it is going to be a bit of a longer fight. So let's go ahead and, you know, we'll lock a boss by quitting out before doing any damage to it. Then we're going to go back and do a hit. Okay. So uh, let's pretend that this is a bigger, a much bigger boss that requires you to do a lot more hits. We're going, I'm going to show you how to use the regular unit area to do your attack. And really, what I had shown there would have worked if I had successfully pressed the uh, the battle skill. But like I said, we're going to go ahead and um, play it as if we're playing against a big boss. And so speed is going to be more important here because you're going to have to wait a little bit longer uh, before you can really do anything. I mean, during this time, you could still activate your uh, skills and, and, and do all the battles. I'm going to show you what it's like. It's just that you're not going to get a lot of damage this way. You're not going to get a lot of damage... Uh, um, uh, before you use the skill so you can see here uh, 240 so I'm gonna get about a trillion damage there so in terms of chipping yes I could chip a little bit but it's really insignificant compared to what I could actually do okay and so it's just best to save yourself some time and get yourself to uh, 200 intensity as fast as possible so that you can maximize your total damage output and so we're going to uh, do one more match here and now we're back up to the 200 intensity that we were waiting for. Let's go ahead and activate both of these cards properly this time. We make sure that we do an attack so that we can spawn uh, some more power gems. And then we're going to activate everything. Now we're going to have a little bit less damage output just because regular unit area 
doesn't passively spawn power gems like high performance area does but it works in terms of getting your uh, getting your damage um boost so we can see here our uh Freedom Fighter now was able to deal 13.4 trillion damage. Okay, so about the same as when we had the uh, high performance area, just slightly lower because we have uh, slightly um, fewer power gems overall. So that is uh, how you would use uh, high performance area slash unit area with Freedom Fighters. This combination is the key to success in any Dark Slayers at this point in time. So make sure that you get that combination, make sure that you incorporate in your team. You're only going to get more damage output uh, if you go with that. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully this uh, um, also helps you understand the correct way to play this deck. And I, uh, I guarantee you're going to see some uh, improved damage output with this if you haven't done this already. All right. So that's all for today. Thank you very much for, uh, for your time. Take care. Have a good event. And I'll see you in the next episode. All right, bye now.